Tēnā, everybody. This is um, Anna Cardno with Wrap Around Wararapa, the regular show that's on every Wednesday morning at Arrow FM, uh, brought to you by the Wararapa DHB, talking to all the different services that we have in Wararapa available to support people in our community. And today, I am incredibly lucky, very fortunate, love um, Lynette Field and all the passion that she brings to our organisation. Morena. Morena, thank you very much for that lovely introduction. <laughs> Lynette, it's wonderful to have you on the show yet again. Yeah. Um, so much to say uh, yes. from you and your oral health department. Mm. But today, something really exciting. Oh, very excited. I am very excited. Um, this year is the 100th anniversary of the start of school dental service in New Zealand. New Zealand was the first country in the world to have that. It started because the troops in World War One had such appalling teeth that the major health issue that they had in the New Zealand army was teeth. Imagine that. Imagine that you're over in the war and the major health issue you've got is not broken limbs and stuff, it's teeth. Not broken limbs and bombs and <laughs> threatening death, but yeah, it's exactly. actually your teeth. So yeah. after World War I, um, what happened is that a lot of people started looking at the children of New Zealand and they did studies, various studies, very learned people. And they were studying, you know, they'd do a couple of thousand kids in a town and they'd find that there were only two that had no need for any dental care at all. New Zealand's population was not rich and so there wasn't really great dental care for children and it was an era where everyone was looking at the future of the world and so things like Plunkett started and it was all about getting women good for breeding. We needed to build back up the country and so children's health was another, you know, especially little girls because um, they wanted them to be good breeders later. <laughs> 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 Sounds like farming. I know, yeah, I suppose terrible, we are a farming. But that was what the world was like then. And so in 1921, a new career was started. There was hundreds of young women who applied and about 30 women got accepted to start the first school dental nursing qualification. And amazing, so there's, there's something, amazing. something very, very special about that date that you just said, that, 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 that was in 1921. So that was 100 years ago. This year. And and just winding back to your opening statements, you were talking about New Zealand being the first. Yes, so we, world we, leaders. We were the world leader in this. And countries have followed us. 15 countries throughout the world have now taken on this um, program. But what's so exciting for me as a woman and as a dental therapist, because we've changed our names lots of times. When I graduated as a dental nurse, then I became a dental therapist, and now they're oral health therapists. I mean, it just changes, you know, that's time, isn't it? Who cares? It's the same <laughs> job, uh, essentially. Um, what is exciting for me is it's about the story of women as well. It, because mm -hmm. when in 1921, the only jobs that are a bright girl could do, well she could go to university but you'd have had to have had an incredibly rich family. I mean mm. women didn't go to university in 1921. You could have gone nursing, you could have gone teaching or you could have been a secretary. That was the sort of the careers mm. that were open to the bright girls. Mm. And so suddenly this new career um, happened and the kind of people that were attracted to it were these intrepid types because what they did was they got on the back of horses, they took, with they. oh, it was just, I've, I've been looking at this stuff this year, just amazing. Pictures of women in these remarkable outfits on the back of horses with two big bags and a chair that folded down a flat chair and they'd go into the outbacks of goodness knows where and they'd set up in the farmer's kitchen all they needed was good um, north facing light because they didn't have lights over the top like we do now. They had to be self-starters. They had to be brave as anything. They had to be really go-getter kind of gals. And then the other thing, which was absolutely fascinating for me, is that, of course, you've got all the restrictions on women. So as soon as they got engaged, they weren't allowed to work. So who made that restriction? Was that government? A the government, so that was policy. Any, yeah, yeah. You, women weren't. It was about the nineteen early sixties before late fifties, early sixties before government working women were allowed to work after they were married. There was one time when um, married women were brought back into the school dental service, and that was um, after the when the baby boom happened. Um, when the baby boom happened, it was after the Depression, 
and so uh, you've got to sorry I've got to get this right the depression happened and so they didn't train as many therapists as, or dental nurses in those days as they usually were because of the depression um, and then they had this baby boom in the 50s and, and and they didn't have enough people so they were doing these advertising campaigns have you got a girlfriend who's at home and her children have gone back to school and she could come back and help you at your sub base getting two or three hundred children treated would be very helpful so that was the first time that they, and, and, and like it's a picture of women's history in New Zealand. It's amazing. It I is think it's absolutely it? the most fascinating career. Um, when I trained, uh, I graduated in February of 1978. I'm wearing my badge today, it's very important to me. Oh, that's another thing. Badges weren't interested in, um, introduced into the school dental service until 1927. And the reason they were introduced was because suddenly dentists got assistance. And they were called dental nurses. And so there was this sort of um, thing going on between the qualified dental nurses who were qualified to treat teeth and yeah. the dental nurses who were dental nursing assistants to help and so they int- introduced the badge so and so the badge set them apart the badge so set the them qualified apart the qualified the had a badge and the unqualified didn't have a badge now that's just crazy i mean it's just such fun and the dentists were always male presumably. always male always there male. was a couple of female dentists uh, oh gosh they wouldn't have come until much later maybe the 40s Maybe. I'm not yeah. sure. I'd have to go and look that up. Gosh, it's fascinating, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's great. You know, like, um, I am i don't think of myself as old. I'm obviously old if I graduated in 1978. But in my lifetime as a dental nurse, I started off as a dental nurse. I went to a school. Um, I sent to Kew in Invercargill. Great place. Stayed there for three years. When I graduated, we were on under the Department of Health. And we were told where we were going. Wow. And we were bonded for two years. Goodness me. So you get sent anywhere Anywhere in the country. Anywhere in New Zealand. Far away from your family. Far, far, far away. Does not matter. People who'd got it. There was in the last um, sort of mm, three or four months of, well, no, maybe six months of training, engagements were like crazy happening because girls were trying to ensure that they could use with the department a reason why they had to stay in that place. So if you were even just slightly keen on this lad, you'd get them to propose. <laughs> <laughs> and that would anchor you to the place that yeah, you wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. So in 1981, so 78, 79, 80, 90, at the end of 1980, I decided that I didn't want to stay in Southland forever, even though I loved Southland, absolutely loved it. Um, I decided I wanted to move. And so I applied to the Department of Health and I said I would like to either go to Wellington or Auckland. And they offered me Masterton or Mary Mary. (laughs) Of course they did. Yeah. And they said, "That what, what do you want? And I chose Masterton and have been incredibly happy ever since. And we're very lucky to have you here. So it was very fortuitous for us that they didn't give you what you wanted. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? It was just, it was a different, different world. And because of the way the career worked, we, we we had a chief dental nurse throughout New Zealand and she worked in the Department of Health. We had standing orders. Which was in Wellington. Based yes, it was in, in Wellington. In Wellington. So, yeah. yeah. We had standing orders and it was a blue book. And it, you would get a memo, would arrive in the mail, no emails or anything, arrive in the mail, and it would say, go to page 34 of the standing orders, we're now changing the way you do such and such. And you had to like, cross it out, date it, write the write the na- number of the memo, and alter it. And that you'd be inspected on those things. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. When I think about the way I'm, I mean, I'm the clinical service manager of my dental nurses and dental therapists, the dental therapists and oral health therapists and the Wairapa. I would never, ever do something like that. My first inspection, Miss Sinclair, oh, she was amazing. She sort of reminded me of Miss Marple, the fat Miss Marple, not the skinny Miss Marple. She had a tweed suit on, a little skinny belt. She wore white gloves. She ducked under the window of the clinic. I had been there a week 
and I had um, come from the training school where we had lots of people around us and I was on my own. A lot of people would go out and they would be second nurse, but depending on your exam results, sometimes you were a sole charge and I was a sole charge. And so I'd clean the cupboards. I had done everything I could to avoid actually touching a tooth because I was really <laughs> nervous. <laughs> so this particular day I was doing um, an old fashioned amalgam filling, which I, we, we haven't even done like 10, 15 years in the Wairapa. But anyway, that's what I was doing. And I was remembering all of the stuff I'd been taught, you know, and I was concentrating hard and I was remembering to talk to the patient. I was remembering to press, um, you've got to press hard and your knuckles had to go white because it was about condensing the filling. And, you know, I'm remembering all this stuff. And the next <laughs> thing, there's a knock on the door. And I said, I'll be with you in a minute. Or, you know, where's to that Something. effect? Mm-hmm. And the door flies open and this woman with a very permed hair, tight permed hair, oh, this tweed God. suit and the little skinny belt says, Nurse, if you and I are to be friends, you will stand when I enter the room. Even though you were working well, I with was a working patient. with a patient. Oh, bless. I know. And then she went along the top of my cupboards with her white glove to check for dust. Goodness me. That's <laughs> insane. So how often did you have to have those horrible oh, Well, she she... She was a very old-fashioned inspector, and this was her last week of working. And she was being followed by a lady who was modern and young and hip and happening and never did that. Um, And, in fact, that lady that followed her went on to become the chief dental nurse in New Zealand. And she was a really Oh, and everybody lived happily ever after. after. (laughs) But I had that moment of the old world. Oh, God. You know, that was, oh, God. It was just amazing. But mind you, if you think back... To her position and who she was, and the fact that she was working very, very much within a man's world still oh, at the time. Oh yes, she must have had to have really. You know, Miss Sinclair must have really had to have been. Oh, they were. They. They were. Um. They were mostly single women, the dental nurse inspectors, and there was a um, principal dental officer above them. It was a very hierarchical a structure. Man, of a course. man, always a man. Mm. Yeah, and um, and that man, usually useless. <laughs> usually quite useless and these women would run it but he would be the figurehead yeah of course um mm. usually quite doddery you know i've had a cup i had a couple of doddery ones and then of course the brave new world came in and um it changed completely i can't even imagine going into one of my staff's clinics and saying this if you are to be, you and I are to be friends, you'll you must stand. stand. Yeah, I just like that's just ridiculous. We're patient focused. Yeah, mm. absolutely patient focused, and I don't believe that um, that Miss Sinclair was. It feels strange to me because you're right. We we talk about patient centred care, but we do a lot more than talk about it. Our mm. entire models of care are oh, based on um, based around a tr- around yeah. a patient and yeah. their family and their yeah. family and, and yeah. you know, and that's how we work. Yes, um, and we think about you know, the community and what's good for the people and yep. how, what our population needs. And yes. It sounds just so far removed from what you're describing at oh, the setup of the child It was. Service. They weren't... A, a, uh, the individual people in there were very adventurous. Their, you know, the women's movement was reflected inside the school dental service. In the 1970s, um, early 1970s, so before I graduated, um uh, th- it became really obvious that dental nurses had lost pay parity with the public health nurses whom they'd had pay parity with. And they and and the government just wasn't doing anything about it. You know, the PSA was fighting the good fight and all so that sort of stuff. So the nurses' union back then, because unions were still very strong, yes. right? so the nurses' union must have been fighting quite hard and then yep. there was nothing happening for the, for the, the dental, school dental nurses. Yeah. So 700 school dental nurses came from around New Zealand and marched on Parliament in their uniforms. How fantastic. What a sight. Have but, you seen images of that? Oh, they yes. must be. Yeah. Oh, yes. I know people who were on that march. Maggie Morgan, who lives here in the Wairarapa, oh, she yeah, was one of those me. people. Maggie Morgan, oh my gosh. Maggie Morgan, Pam Hauntsey, and Sheila Brown, they were the big three. They were wild women, strong, wild women, and they fought fought for the oral health services in New Zealand. They made sure that the services that were being offered were right and they fought for the women. Because we were a female dominated Mm. group, I have, in my staff, I have one man. 
Which would be unusual now, wouldn't it? Because it, it is very woman orientated. Yeah. So that's as unusual now having a having a bloke on board as yeah. it was having yeah. having Miss Sinclair around yeah. at the time. Mm. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's it's a it, and because of that female domination, pay equity was just dreadful, mm. just appalling, absolutely appalling. And a dental nurse or an oral health therapist or a, a dental therapist, whatever you want to call mm. them, they aren't like any other profession in health in that they are responsible for the complete treatment of that person for the whole entire time between for us it's birth and 18 so and they get them back and back and back and back you diagnose what you're going to do so you examine you diagnose you treat you make those decisions. You make the decisions about the whole treatment. A mm. lot of professions, somebody else has diagnosed it and told you that they need that, and so you then do that. Right. Gotcha. We are the examination, diagnosis, treatment, and then we make the decision about how frequently will that person come back. Mm. So mm. we're looking at the whole person and looking at what's the needs of that person as a as a whole person mm-hmm. because i've talked to you before about how the mouth is the gateway to the body yeah you have and yeah. it's like i can't even stress enough that you that that point because because it is the start of the alimentary canal let's just ignore the lumps and bumps and stuff that you could, might find like cancers and things like that mm. but because it is the gateway to the body if someone's got a high decay rate are they more at risk of diabetes and heart disease and cancer because of the type of diet they're eating? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. Yeah. Who is and the, you're picking that up from very young. We're picking that up on. from very young. Children don't decide what they're going to eat themselves. Their mums and dads and nanas and aunties and uncles do. So mum and dad and nana and auntie are eating exactly the same thing. So the, the profession in the DHB, this is me with my hobby horse, the mm. profession in the DHB that knows the health of the wire wrapper and the potential health problems mm-hmm. of the water wrapper the best is us. Mm. And that makes perfect, perfect sense. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, really does. It's it's interesting, isn't it? How um you you know you say you see children right from birth because I think they first come into you yeah, as a baby. Four don't months, they? About four, four months. months yeah, I'm, yeah. In fact, I'm whipping away from here. The mums are all going to be waiting and the, they're sitting they in the are waiting because room. Because I've nabbed you. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a whole lot of mums and babies that will be waiting for me when I um, zoom out of here. Yeah. Not even saying goodbye to anyone as, as I run out the door. So you know, like yeah. yeah. So we yeah. do because it's it's a fascinating. When I trained, nothing I do now is the same as when I trained. There isn't a filling material that I use now that was invented when I trained. Mm. The type of structure for a hole when you're drilling a hole Mm. is completely different. When I trained, it was all engineering. It was all engineering. It was about um, making sure the filling stayed in with the way that you designed the hole. Mm -hmm. I'm using words that a a dentist is listening to this will go, what do you mean a hole? It's a cavity. (laughs) But I'm just, you know, like, so... Broadly speaking, it's still a hole. Yeah, yeah, it's still a hole. Nowadays, it's a chemical bond. Right. So it's a completely different thing. When I trained, we did this thing called Black's Modified Cavities. And so those cavities were slightly um, triangulated underneath so that the tooth filling couldn't come out. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, they're like, a, like a, just like a puddle. They're mm. just a puddle. And because they're chemically, chemically bonded, bonded. And they're not going to come out. Mm. Yeah. I do remember, I remember, you know, as a child having amalgam fillings. And mm. I remember, I don't think I had very many of them, but I still remember the gritty taste in my mouth when a filling would come out and chip out and you'd roll it around on your tongue and you knew that it was part of your filling that had come out of your... Yep tooth yeah when you bit on something yeah nowadays that doesn't happen um what happens mostly with the modern fillings is they wash Mm -hmm. and so it's a sort of a wash down which means that um the bottom is still covered Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. like if you are regularly visiting so they wear down like a a road that's been driven yeah and not fast but that as opposed to chipping Mm -hmm. you know it's um because the bite force is horrendous i mean it's several elephants for every bite, biting down, it's like mm-hmm. the force of several elephants. 
Amazing, really. I mean, I don't know that there's a terrible thing that some people do, and I would never do it. But if you're trying to move something and you can use your mouth and your teeth, that's a pretty effective mm. advice. Mm. You mm. wouldn't do it, of course. No. <laughs> You don't want to break those teeth. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's very exciting. So we... Um, so so just on that, on those enormous changes that, mm. that you've seen over that mm. time, what's the retraining oh, like? Or, or, you know, the, the, the training updated now? training? Right, so now they current. go... Yeah, now they go to... There's two universities now instead of just Otago. Um, in my day, there were three places you could train. You could train in Auckland, Wellington or Christchurch, and I trained in Christchurch. We thought we were superior, obviously. Oh, well, you are, because my my family's all from Canterbury. Very, <laughs> very, very, very one-eyed. It's all about the red and black. And exactly. Yeah. Totally so you understand. understand. Good. Totally okay. Understand. Um, and and so each training school in my day would have the opportunity to decide how they were going to do it. So I did art at university for um, a little bit because they were trying to get manual dexterity. So I did embroidery and pottery and all sorts of things. I remember writing an essay on the bold and um, uh, the bold use of colour because I didn't know anything else about art and I had to write an essay on this particular painting. Um, we did. I did teachers' college. Um, we went to teachers' college for an amount of time because we had to learn as part of your as part of my training. Yeah, um, and then we also did the dentistry part. So Christchurch thought they were very innovative by pushing you out to make sure you did these things. Nowadays we go there's Otago University and it's called um, an oral health therapist degree, mm -hmm. um, and it. Well, I haven't done it, so I'm, I can't be as, as clear about what they do. But it basically is what prepares the modern young person to come out and work in our service, and in Auckland the same. Right. Where now there's all sorts of um, movements forward. They're looking now at the adult scope of practice. So what that means is that uh, so I'm registered to treat up to 18. So, mm -hmm. the, so if someone came in to me on their 17th and 364th, day of life, I could fix their teeth, no mm. problem at all. If they come to me the next day on their birthday, it's illegal for me to fix their teeth. Right. The gotcha. teeth haven't changed, mm -hmm. but it's illegal. Now, that was a safety measure that was put in by the Dental Association, and that's to protect the job of dentists. They're now realising that that's actually rather foolish, and so there's um, all sorts of different things that people are doing. Oral health therapy, dental therapy, dental nursing, has changed dramatically. In the old days, you used to only be able to work for DHBs. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, if you don't mind being paid not as well, you work for a DHB. Mm -hmm. If you want to be paid more, you work private practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's alongside, you know, a, you know, Lumino or one of our yeah. dentists. Yeah, mm. sure. Mm. Gotcha. And, and it's considerably more. The, uh, the, public health has, the public sector hasn't kept up. Mm -hmm. But I think that's with a lot of. I think that's sort of across the board, isn't it? Mm. That's that's mm. part of mm. part yeah. of what we the, what we support what we do provide in the yeah. public thing is that we provide all the ongoing training and the wraparound and the mentoring and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I get new grads and you know the difference in salary is substantial, I say right, well, are they going to pay your registration? Are they going to wrap around and give you support and give you a mentor for a year? Are they going to no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the differences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also, um, I think for satisfaction, we treat everybody. There's a certain cohort that doesn't go to the dentist because they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. There really is. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's a lot, and you know, it is as important as teeth are, and there is no argument. I mean, you talk about you know the gateway for the for the health of the whole person is is in the mouth, and. And I and I get that, but it just seems so um, I don't know mundane to be spending big money on your teeth. So I, I get that. I know, and I, it is pricey. It is. I I saw. I was giving out. I was doing an orientation day at the DHB, and I gave out this poster because it just resonated with me. Forty seven percent of what a person notices about you first up is mm. your smile. Mm. I hope I get this right. Seven percent is your hair, 11, no, 7% let your hair, clothes is 4%, mm -hmm. and there was another thing that I spend lots of money on, smell, smell, <laughs> and oh, that's I was thinking, me, <laughs> perfume every morning, it's the first thing I do, yeah, I, I know, it. and so I was thinking, okay, when I'm looking at my budget of discretionary income, do I spend 7% of my discretionary income on my hair? Not a chance. Mm. My dye jobs and haircuts aren't cheap. Um, and I go, 
pretty regularly because the grey's coming through. Oh, see, I've just gone natural. It's yeah, just there you all go. the grey. Yeah, but you know yeah. what I mean? It's Save like, some money. Yeah, I know, but in a year I've probably paid more than, to go, than I would pay to go to the dentist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, it's about where are our priorities. Yeah. yeah, and you're, you're right about that whole smile, that engagement piece. Yeah. You, know, you see people. Yeah. And, and you know eyes what? is think, the next best, biggest thing. People yeah. notice your, your eyes. Your eyes, eyes and your smile. So I find something that I always I feel is really sad is when you see children particularly but even you know women adults who cover their mouth a lot oh, yeah. and and smile with closed lips because they're embarrassed about mm. the state of their uh, teeth. Two people in my life do that. One is a niece who wanted orthodontic care and her parents decided that they wouldn't do it and she could do it when she um you know, when she could afford it. Well, she's now a registered midwife and she's starting her journey of orthodontics. But she smiles every single photo. This is a hot girl, really gorgeous looking girl, never smiles with teeth, mm. always just a smirky lip look. You know, she's lovely and mm. she is, if you were to not see her and to just talk to her and, you know, you would imagine her smiling broadly, and that's the kind of personality she's got, but it's not, it's just lips. Mm. And the other one yesterday was um, I when I was doing, um, not you said Monday, when I was doing the orientation at the hospital, one of the ladies that I was talking to sat the whole time with her hand over her mouth. Mm. Now, for me, that's a red flag. Mm. Absolute mm. red flag. Mm. She's unhappy. Mm. I once had a lady come to see me, and um, she'd been the victim of domestic abuse. And her partner had knocked her front teeth out. And she had not gone to the police on that particular occasion. She had not registered the knocking out of the teeth for ACC. Mm -hmm. And so um, she had now got the courage and she had left her partner and she was starting a new life and she was wanting to get a job. But she couldn't smile and she knew the kind of jobs that she was going to get were in the service industries. Mm -hmm. And she knew she needed some front teeth. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, whoa. Mm. We don't even know we're born. No, no, exactly. Yeah. Always register accidents for ACC. If there's blood in your mouth, register the accident for ACC, even if it doesn't look like anything's wrong. Most of the tooth is under the gum. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Good advice. Good yeah. advice. Now, let's bring this back because we. I think you and I could talk for hours. <laughs> I just love it. I find uh, I find everything you have to say quite fascinating, oh, and you're nice. so passionate about oh, what you do. I which love is what I really do. Cool. I absolutely love what I do, and I, yeah, I it's think so it's cool. a life well lived. Mm. You know, um, I think about the kind of careers I could have gone into. Accounting was what my father wanted me to oh, do. Oh, don't. I know. Can you imagine me as an accountant? No, I can't imagine you as an accountant. I know. I, mind you, seriously. If I if I met you and your passion and your energy and enthusiasm and just just your vibrancy and somebody said to me and what sort of career do you think that she is and I I wouldn't have chosen dentistry the oral health. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bring to I think possibly I would align you know in my in my very uneducated head I would align oral health and dentistry more along with, alongside well, the yeah, um, okay. Miss Sinclair's of the world <laughs> yeah. but. And, and I have got a little story of my own because when I was at university, I did go to Otago because yeah. it's not very far from Canterbury. Yeah. And of course, it yeah. is the best place to be. And so yes. I uh, went to Otago University and I went out for my sins with a dental student. And so I used to go to the School of Dentistry to get my teeth done yeah. as a, as a yeah. sort of, you know, lab rat. Yeah. And um, anyway, he was very boring. He should have been an accountant anyway. <laughs> not, not a dentist. Anyway, Lucky escape. Moved on from there. <laughs> hey, but look, just before we're about to finish, because we're wrapping up, and I always hate this part, but 100 years. Okay, yes. there's a celebration. We've there got one minute to talk Ripper. about it. It's Go. in Wingate Lane. It's on the 22nd of May. Anyone who's ever worked in the oral health service, we're really keen for you to come. Get in touch with the Community Dental Clinic. We are really excited. It's just a casual thing. We've got a, a couple of speakers talking about their lives. Um, I'm the MC. Um, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. I'm really looking forward to it. It's it's just such an amazing thing. 15 countries in the world have copied us. Yeah. We are trailblazers. And it's not often that New Zealand's the the leader, the forefront. Absolutely. You know, we're often just picking oh, up Oh, except for the, the votes for women. What, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. What is that about? You know, mm -hmm. votes for women, a career that was started for women or assumed to be for women. You know, it's something yeah. there. Yeah. Who All knows? Right, so. <laughs> good, old, good old Kiwis. Yeah. Hey, so just quickly, Wingate Lane, which yep. is down Opiki Road. Yes, on the 22nd. Used Saturday, to be Paper Road. It used a lot to be Paper people, Road, yeah. yes. On the 22nd, starting at 11am. 22nd of May. Yes, 22nd of May, finishing at about 3. Everyone will just be standing around gossing. Um, it'll be fun. You know, 
you can't get a better group of people than oral health people. Yeah, well, so it sounds. Yeah. You know, I who laughed. Would, who would when know? I was organising <laughs> it, the people that were there said, oh, I suppose we better get sugar-free juice. <laughs> was so funny like it was just like the poor things you know <laughs> who would have thought it now listen that was a fantastic show thank you Lynette Field thank for being you. back with us again thank and a hundred years of oral health school, yeah. school dental yeah. service fantastic yeah Lovely. and I've been in it nearly half of it <laughs> good god thank you so very much okay thank you <laughs>